It is late afternoon on the Mekong River in Cambodia. In Dayum Rokar commune, Keone is busy ploughing his paddy fields. When the rains come, his land will be naturally irrigated by the river waters, providing his household with a stock of rice to last the entire year. Down near the riverbank, Keone's wife, Nan Fa, is busy feeding the family cattle. Their fodder too comes from the vegetation floating on the river surface. Out on the river, Van Na and his wife Sopon are hoping for a good catch of fish today. A little down the shore, Jantu is collecting shells from the river sand, which will make a tasty meal for the family dinner. Like millions who live along the Mekong, the lives of Deum Rokar's villagers depend a great deal upon the river's bounty. ตะเลนึงปดอลพอลประยอจឲ្យวิชาปูรสនៅภูมิดําละกานึงบ้านละอ Over generations, people have learnt to adapt their lives to the river's ever-changing moods and rhythms, including the annual phenomenon of flooding. Contrary to popular belief, floods bring many benefits to the people of the Mekong. Lũ là một nguồn tài nguyên về nước ngọt. Lũ mỗi năm về đồng bằng thì mang theo phù sa về bồi đắp cho đồng bằng và ngoài ra thì mang cái nguồn phù du rồi tôm cá thủy sản rồi rào về cho các cái con sông trên đồng bằng cũng như là làm cho cái môi trường sinh thái ở hai bên bờ sông được cải thiện và thay chua rửa mặn ở đồng bằng làm cho việc sản xuất được đạt được hiệu quả sau mỗi mùa lũ tốt hơn. But excessive flooding can sometimes lead to great hardship and devastation as happened in the year 2000. ไอ้ចំពោះបញ្ហាទឹកដែលឡើងនៅឆ្នាំ <coughs> The huge human, social and economic loss from the 2000 floods made governments across the region realise that relying on traditional response measures was just not enough. A more systematic and transnational approach to tackling the Mekong's floods was needed. The institution entrusted with this task was the Mekong River Commission. A transnational body set up by the countries of the Mekong region to jointly manage their shared water resources. Following a series of consultations between partners, stakeholders and technical experts, the Flood Management and Mitigation Programme, or the FMMP, was initiated by the MRC in 2004. The program has five main components. Setting up of a flood management mitigation center. Structural measures and flood proofing. 
enhancing cooperation in addressing transboundary flood issues. Flood emergency management strengthening and land management. Through this integrated approach, the FMMP aims to minimise the hardship and loss caused by floods and to harness them as a positive force in the development of the Mekong's communities. Flood Emergency Management Strengthening, or FEMS, is a key component of the FMMP. The component's main aim is to enable government officials at all levels to understand the need for flood planning and to train them to develop and implement such plans. The main target area of the project are the most flood affected area in Cambodia and Vietnam, particularly from the year 2000 flood. Uh, in Cambodia, um, the provinces of Kandal and Preveng are the most affected, and in Vietnam, the provinces of Anjang and Dong Thap. The first step in implementing the FEMS component was to conduct an institutional role analysis of existing bodies looking after flood planning and management, and identify problems with their functioning. In Cambodia, this work is handled by a special national committee for disaster management at the country level and similar committees below it at the provincial, district and commune levels. In Vietnam, the responsibility for flood planning and management comes under the Department of Dike Management, Flood and Storm Control or DDM-FSC, which is part of the Ministry of Agriculture but though systems of this kind had already been in existence for several years, the culture of advanced planning for floods had still to take root in the system and needed strengthening. The strategy the FEMS adopted was not to tell officials what they should do, but rather to help them develop the plans themselves through a participatory and consensus building approach. ដំបងគឺបានចុះសិក្សាអំពីទូនីតិនិងការទទួលរដ្ឋកោះត្រូវរបស់គណៈកម្មការគ្រប់គ្រងគ្រប់មន្រ័យខេត្តស្រុកស